Humans! Welcome. Has it ever happened to you? You remember that as a kid you had a very strange, bizarre dream. You don't exactly remember what it was about, but you do remember that it had something to do with Kermit the Frog, Bugs Bunny and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then when you were older, you walked into a store and you saw in the DVD aisle a movie that had on the cover Bugs Bunny, Kermit the Frog and the Ninja Turtles. And you're like, wait, this wasn't a dream? This was actually real? And that is what happened to me. And this movie that is actually existing is called All Stars to the Rescue. It is a movie where all your favorite cartoon characters from the 80s come together to help little children in need or bully them mercilessly. I am looking at you, Bugs Bunny. But let's find out what this movie is all about, shall we? The movie starts, as most children's movies do, in the White House with former President George W. Bush Sr. and his wife, who is very busy petting a dog. So former President George W. Bush Sr. and his wife have a very important message for us. Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue is the powerful story of a teenager dealing with drug and alcohol abuse. And some of your favorite cartoon characters will help you understand how drugs and alcohol can ruin your life. So watch the program. Talk about it with your family. And make the right decision. Stay away from drugs and alcohol. Make the right decision, people. And now we actually have a clue about how or at least why this movie came to be. Because you see, this is not a movie where Disney and Warner Bros and what have you said, hey, let's come together and make a cool movie. Because um, if you want that, then go watch Roger Rabbit. This is a movie that is supposed to teach children about the dangers of drug abuse. I mean, it was the 90s and drug abuse was a problem in the 90s. Good thing that changed. Anyway, uh, let's get straight into it and see how well that went. The actual movie starts with a beautiful, peaceful morning, a little girl sleeping in her bed. That girl is Cory, and she is one of the main characters in this movie. And look, there's already all of the cartoon characters to grab the little kid's attention, so they will actually continue to watch this boring excuse of a cartoon. I mean meaningful movie with a meaningful message. But honestly, um, as I watched the movie, I actually remembered how boring I found it as a kid. So, yeah. Back to the movie, the music suddenly becomes very dark and menacing and we see a hand reaching in through the door and grabbing the little girl's piggy bag. And that is when our first heroes come alive. Oh, morning already? I was smurfing like a baby. Oh yeah, I do that too, smurfing like a baby. And with smurfing like a baby, I mean crying a lot and shitting my pants. <gasps> Great smurfs! Corey's piggy bank is gone! He really has the eagle eye, doesn't he? Like, immediately! The piggy bank has got the first thing that I noticed after I woke up. Hey, what's the problem? What's the problem? Who 
Smurf the bell! Hurry, my little Smurfs. Cory's been robbed, and we must wake her up. Huh? Oh. Huh. Next is Alvin Garfield. You want to help track down the thief, Garfield? Hey, going through life with a blue lampshade is work enough. Wake me when the lasagna comes. Let me rephrase that. Do you want to help, or do you want to be lunch? And that right there is actually one of the only jokes that I actually found clever. I mean, Alf is an alien that eats cats and Garfield is a lazy, fat stinker of a cat that would never help anybody. Alf pressurizing him, saying that he's going to eat him, actually makes sense. Unfortunately, uh, scenes like these where the characters actually act like themselves are very rare in this movie. Nice. opportunity to be of service. But where's Alvin? Alvin! Busy! There's someone who needs your help! What? Another autograph hound? Come on! Hey! Wait a minute! Even with Alvin and the Shipmunks, they are actually still acting like the characters that they are supposed to be. Alvin is acting like a little brat that doesn't care for anybody because that's who he is, that's what we know him for, but unfortunately, again, this will change as soon as the drug plot starts, because then they will all lose their characters and will become pretty boring, actually. Oh, oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm not late for breakfast, am I? Wake up, Corey! I hate when that happens. So then more all-stars assemble. We have Pooh, Kermit, Slimer makes a short appearance. Why did I set the alarm on a Saturday? My bank! Someone took my bank! Yeah, that would also be the first thing that I would be concerned about when I wake up and see a ghost eating my lamp. The heroes investigate and they find the piggy bank in her brother's room. Alright, there must be 20 bucks in here, easy! Her brother's name is Michael and he will be the main character of this movie, so get used to him because he will be around the whole time. Michael? It's me! Go away! I'm just looking for... Is that my piggy bank? I told you to stay out! Michael is very cranky because, as we will soon find out, he is doing the drugs. Well, I mean, just marijuana at this point, but we all know that marijuana is making you really cranky and aggressive and skittish. Yeah, I'm sure that's how marijuana works. And the shipmunks are finding Michael's secret stash under the bed. Either someone's conducting a major chemistry experiment, or this is a serious no-no. See what I mean? You can't tell me that this is the reaction that Alvin would have to discovering something like this. Because I'm pretty sure he just wouldn't care. Let's be, let's be honest, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't care at all. Already out of character. Awesome. Good start. Where did you get the money for this stuff, Michael? What difference does it make? I got it, didn't I? <sighs> yeah, that's it. Do it. Later, Michael, like any American teenager from the 90s, hangs out at the arcade with his friends and they are smoking weed together. And Smokey makes his first appearance. He will be around a lot. Yeah, this stuff's pretty good, but I got something even better. Ladies thing. Now oh, that's cool. Mikey! Mikey, you gotta try this! 
It gives you a major high, like that. I'm in. The guy who is definitely not the evil leader of the group, I mean, complete with his side chick hanging on his shoulder and everything, is presenting the really hard stuff. You don't want to be left out, do you? Come on, what are you waiting for? Try it, try it. You want him to like you, don't you? And since cops can apparently smell when teenagers take out the really hard stuff, they are there immediately and Michael has to flee. It, it was my first time! Honest! I'll never do it again! Eh, what's up, Doc? Huh? Oh, it's... it's Bugs Bunny. Is that better or worse? Okay, you win. You got me dead to rights. I'm not a cop, I'm a rabbit. But just because I got long ears doesn't mean there's nothing in between them. You were running from a rabbit? <laughs> He's a cartoon! <laughs> Look who's talking! <laughs> I'm a little bit confused about the lore of this movie, by the way. Can humans see the cartoons talking and running around? Or can't they? Because in the beginning, Cory seems to not be able to see them, but Michael will be talking to them in this movie all the time, no problem. You could think that it's actually a hallucination from the drug use, but later in the movie, Cory will also start seeing the tunes and talk to them. So what is it? Are they real or are they just hallucinations from a drug using boy and a little girl's imagination? Could the parents also see them? Am I reading too much into this 22 minutes long anti-drug campaign? Probably, definitely. I don't care. You don't look so good. What's this? A joint? So what's the big attraction? I mean, uh, how did you get started anyway? I started because I wanted to. What do you care? Why is Bucks against it? I mean, let's be realistic if anyone is using drugs in this whole thing, then it's Bugs Bunny. Oh, and, and, and Garfield, definitely Garfield. Garfield is also definitely using marijuana. I mean, yeah, he has the munchies all the time. Meanwhile, at the home, we will see the best parenting that I have ever witnessed. Well, that's funny. There's a couple of beers missing. Oh, honey, you probably drank them watching football last night. Who else would take them? Well, not your teenage son, that's for sure. Why would you even think that? I mean, that's totally unheard of that teenagers would ever steal alcohol and consume alcohol. That never happened before, ever. So, yeah. Well, I'm gonna start cleaning out the garage. Call me for lunch. Corey, is your brother all right? He's been acting so strange lately. You know, we love you both. And if there's something wrong, we'd like to help. Maybe tell that to your son, maybe? And maybe don't put the pressure on your little six-year-old daughter, maybe? And maybe actually try to talk to your son. Maybe. I don't know, Mom. I don't think so. Thanks, hon. Meep, meep. She definitely didn't actually want to talk about that, did she? Excuse me, but why didn't you tell her? Pooh! You can talk? <laughs> of course I can. But you never talked before. Why, I believe you're right. But now I have something to ask, if you please. Why didn't you say you were worried about Michael too? If I tell and he gets in trouble, he'll blame me. Perhaps. But what will happen to him if you don't tell? I see what they are trying to do, but maybe don't put the pressure on a little girl, please. Fasten your seatbelts. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. Next stop, two years ago. And now Bucks has brought Michael into his timey-wimey machine. Hey, we 
Way to go! Nice catch! Hey, thanks! And where's the color? Listen, kid, this is the past. And the past is in black and white. Get it? I mean, I can't argue with that logic. Um, do you recognize that guy, perchance? Uh, it's me. When I was a kid. You guys cruising for lung cancer or what? Mm -mm. We're getting high. You know, <coughs> grass, marijuana. Well, yeah, sure, I knew that. Wanna hit? What's the matter? You scared? Why are the consuming stuff kids all so evil? Okay, it's, it's a 90s movie, so they have to act like 90 movie villains. I kind of forgot about that. It all makes sense now. Okay, moving on. No, no. So, you still think it was your choice? Well, I didn't want him to think I was a wimp. Better a wimp than an all-day sucker. If everyone was jumping off a cliff, would you go too? Hmm, I guess you would, wouldn't you? Not very bright. Definitely not one of the world's foremost thinkers. Everyone's got problems, kid. Even us rabbits. The point is, nobody gets everything they want. Hey, lighten up on my man here. He was just experimenting with some friends. Did Bucks just become the bully and Smokey was protecting him? Like, the plot twist? Back Dad, at home. can I talk to you? Sure, anytime, sugar. Sorry, but I kind of have to ask, is that a normal name to call your little child? I mean, I'm not a native English speaker, obviously, but I feel a little bit uncomfortable when the father calls his daughter the same name that he would call his favorite stripper. So... Anytime, sugar. What's up? I'm worried about Michael. He's been acting really weird. Corey, being weird is just part of being a teenager. The only wise words to ever come out of any of the parents in this movie, ever. He'll grow out of it. I think it's more than that. Huh? Nothing. Never mind. Dad. Dad. That should have been the moment that you should have been a little bit more persistent, actually. You know, for ten bucks, I could score us some crack. Oh yeah, crack! Now we're talking. You've got money, Michael. But... Crack? That's serious stuff. Come on, Michael. You're not gonna chicken out on your friends, are you? But friends like these, am I right? I mean, I remember how it was when I was a teenager and... I don't miss that time. I definitely don't miss that. Got your wallet! Hey, give me that back! On a side note, that boy is like really buff. Are we sure he's just doing the green leaf stuff and nothing else? And it's time for my favorite character that my little kid heart could have actually ever wished for. Unfortunately, that far into the plot, he is just going to be another copy of the same character repeating the same thing that drugs are bad, so... <sighs> yeah. Kawabunga, dude! Yep. Same. Kawabunga, dude. How did you ever get so totally cool? What am I doing down here? <laughs> like you fell through a radical hole, dude. You could have avoided it, but you weren't thinking. Come to think of it, that's a lot of your problem. What problem? Drugs, bud. Your brain must be, like, really messed up. The irony when a guy who sounds stoned as fuck all the time and says DUDE all the time is telling you that drugs are bad. We hear another lecture from Mikey to Michael and... Wait... Why did they give the main character a name that sounds almost the same as the name of another character? 
Couldn't they have given him a different name like Peter or Will or Warlock? Better see for yourself. What are you talking about? This. Where am I? Well, you're about to take a trip through the human brain. Now it's Baby Kermit's and Miss Piggy's time to lecture our boy Michael. Or Warlock. Thanks to the power of imagination. Imagination. Right. You see, Michael? Drugs can take you up and make you feel okay for a while. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> so they show Michael's brain and the effects that drugs can have on his brain. And I actually understand what they were trying to do here. I'm just not really sure if it really worked the way they did it. Do you see what I mean? There is so much happening that even I as an adult have trouble understanding what they are actually saying. What's wrong? What's happening? Run! This is what they do to your brain, Michael! Actually, this is just one artist's conception. <laughs> Where are we now? We're inside me? That's awkward. This is what's happening inside me? Hey, he's gonna fall! So, drugs also make you forget how to skateboard. That would have been a nightmare for every 80s kid. Somebody help me! Somebody help me! And now the drug trip is over and we will not see any cartoons anymore. What's happening to me? Are you okay? Okay, it's huh? the DuckTales. Huh? Now I'm seeing ducks? Oh man, I gotta get off of these drugs. Drugs? Oh, bad news, Michael. Why don't you just say no? Well, maybe it's because I don't want to. Maybe it's because you don't know how. There's very yet why that wonderful ways to say no. Don't say no, wait. And they start singing. Better learn if you and take him wherever you go. No dice, no sir. And now they all come together to sing a song about the use of drugs and how it's bad. Here's a practical reply. Go ahead, let's fly, spit right in his eye and say no! And there's Tigger. Why wasn't he earlier? He could have told us a little bit about the use of Ritalin. Those drugs are so boring! That would totally work. Now you could say beat it, get lost, get out of my face with that stuff. But that could be tactless. You may prefer cool like this. I'll get you guys later, okay? I've got too much homework. It's wrong. A good way of showing your friends that you are still cool. There's a million wild and wonderful ways to say no. <laughs> Guess I'm allergic. And a good excuse is something you never outgrow. It's back to my complexion. And that also works. What a nightmare. But now he wakes up and there will be no more cartoon characters talking to him because he will realize that it was all a dream. Are we alone? I didn't say anything, okay? I didn't, didn't say anything. I thought I told you to stay out of here. Pooh Bear wants to know why you don't talk to mom and dad. Tell Pooh Bear to mind his own business. I just want it to be like it was before. Yeah, well, it's not like it was. So get out of here. And if you say a word to mom or dad... Ow, you're hurting me. Micah gets all give the ring to me Frodo on his little sister and she will run away 
and he will not fall down into a heap of leaves and he will not redeem himself by taking three arrows to the chest and dying a heroic death because it's not that kind of movie unfortunately uh, i didn't mean to pesky brag you did the right thing well, i don't know she is my little sister i i don't know what's right anymore I'm not in very good shape. This is when I personally thought that the movie was starting to drag us along for far too long. There's still 10 minutes left of the movie and everything that will happen now is just the same repeating mantra of drugs are bad and we get it and if we didn't get it up until this point then that's because we are little children that don't understand what you are talking about anyway. If that's me, I'm in serious trouble. We gotta do something about this. Hey! Hey! The thing is, we don't always see things the way they really are. This one, for instance. What do you see? Me. I see me. Wrong! Flag on the play, 10 point penalty. Who's that? Well, it's not Freddy Krueger. This is you. Pretty pitiful, huh? You see, drugs aren't your pal, pal. They're your enemy, storming the battlements, trying to take control. I can quit if I want to. I can leave my friends behind, cause my friends do drugs, and if they do drugs, then they ain't no friends of mine. Sorry. I know you told me to stay out, but... Michael? Go ahead, kid. Open the box. It won't hurt you. Who are you? A friend of your brother's. Open the box, Corey. I wouldn't listen to him. Oh, bother! Pooh Bear! Open the box. What is all this stuff? Why don't you see for yourself? Cory finds Michael's drug stash and Smokey tries to turn Cory to the dark side. Michael is having a really bad trip and this will go on for far too long. Getting spit out by Miss Piggy. I'm sure that's a fetish for some people. Oh yes, I can see it all! Well, uh, some of it. Come in, come in, my fine young friend, and I'll peer into your future in my little crystal ball. Duffy Duck also makes an appearance and shows Michael his future. Again. And everybody comes together and tells Michael that drugs are bad. Again. The future lies behind those doors. It's... it's me. This is my future? It is if you don't get off those drugs. You use, you lose. Listen to us. We care about you, Mikey. What's up, Doc, is your life if you don't cut it out. There's nothing cool about a fool on drugs. Just believe in yourself. Yeah, you're excellent just the way you are. Without drugs. No! Michael comes out of the closet and he is saving his little sister from using the drugs. I mean, d does she even know what to do with them? And how to use them? Cory, don't you ever, ever, ever do this stuff. But you did it. I was a dope. I was wrong. You don't have to quit on your own. Talk to mom and dad. They'll help. I'll help. Think I've listened to you long enough. Hey! <laughs> he will try to come back. And when he gets here, we'll be ready for him. Right, guys? Right! Oh! Oh, thank goodness! I thought I was going to miss something important. Michael finally defeats Smokey and the All-Stars go into a 
picture on the wall even though that's not where they lived before i mean they all had their own little homes and stuff but who cares come on sis let's go talk to mom and dad and yeah that was all stars to the rescue it's a movie it 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 is it is a movie it is a movie that probably a lot of people don't even know exists but it does and i'm pretty sure that a lot of people that saw it actually forgot it existed for a long time so you're welcome don't get me wrong i understand what they were trying to do with this movie and i think the message is important that this movie is trying to get across but i'm just not sure that it really worked who is this movie for it is little kids right i mean it has all your favorite 80 cartoon characters that the little kids loved in the 80s but it was about a topic that most kids wouldn't actually understand or care about and apart from not being understandable to the kids the tunes in this movie were most of the time just the same character over and over again telling the same thing over and over again that drugs are bad it actually didn't really matter who had his Michael lecturing time now. They were all saying the same thing and they were all acting the same way. And maybe for some kids it was enough just seeing their favorite character. But I remember that for me as a kid it didn't work. Sorry, just saying dude all the time does not cut it Michelangelo and for the actual audience who I think would be teenagers and young adults this movie doesn't work either because teenagers and young adults will not care about little kids tune characters telling them that drugs are bad even with a little song scratch that especially with a little song but you know what feel free to correct me and tell me that this movie was actually your favorite as a child growing up and that it actually helped you to stay away from drugs anyway that's all she wrote see ya bye